Mixing doesn't have to be hard. In fact, mixing should be easy. What's up guys? My name is Schaefer. I'm here to show you that you guys can actually mix your vocals all with the stock plugins that come with your recording program. The most important part is just understanding your tools. To show you guys that this is possible, I'm going to be mixing a little example track. This track is called In My Zone by an artist known as Vito Real. We recorded this in my home studio. You can find it on Spotify, all streaming platforms. When I mix the original song, I mixed it in Studio One. I used a lot of third party plugins. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. Make sure your folder with your stems is accessible from your browser in FL Studio. You do that by going to Options, File Settings, and then finding the folder in your computer. You're going to go to Song, and you're just going to drag them in the order that you would like to have them arranged in. Step two, number them. So now that all that is out of the way, I'm just going to solo the main vocal and the instrumental. Sick, right so first we're gonna pull up the fruity compressor now the only problem it doesn't have a visual aid to show you how much compression actually being done to your vocal it makes you focus on your ears and what you're hearing versus what you're seeing and what you think is right I'm gonna go ahead and start with three to one as the ratio so your ratio is gonna be how hard the compressor is working you generally got to turn it up a little bit just so it's doing something and then the next thing you're gonna play with is the threshold now you're gonna pull the threshold down until you hear the vocals start to get quieter because the compressor is compressing it. A lot of plugins have auto gain, so as you're compressing, they're gonna turn the volume up so it's easier to hear the compression. On this particular plugin, we don't have that luxury, but um, it's not a big deal. It's gotta use our ears a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it, and I'm gonna pull the threshold down until the vocal starts to get turned down, so that's how I know some compression is happening. So high, I can't be low, can't stop. All right, so you can tell that's getting a lot quieter. Um, I pulled the threshold down pretty far. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gain up and see how that vocal is sounding more, okay? I actually think that sounds pretty good where I have it, so. Um, it's doing a healthy amount of compression, but it doesn't sound over compressed to me. So the next thing is you're going to play with this attack time. Now, keep in mind, if you use a fast attack time, which is going to be zero milliseconds, right? Instantly, the co compressor's kicking in instantly. The fast attack time is going to compress your transients harder. So your vocal is not going to cut through. This is how you crush something and put it to the back of the mix. Or let's say something like a snare drum, the transient's really loud and you want to make that transient quieter, bring out more body, you'd use a fast um, fast attack time. But with vocals, so mainly with the lead vocal, our whole goal is to make sure the lead vocal cuts through the army of instruments that's surrounding it. So we're going to use a slower attack time. Now, I generally recommend about a 30 millisecond attack. That's going to let enough of that uh, punch through, but it's going to catch and tame the rest of the vocal. So I'm going to play it and I'm going to adjust the attack time so you guys can hear it in action. So high, I can't be low, can't stop, get mine, and then I go 10 bands, 100 bands, really yeah, what I want. Okay, you see how much more compressed it sounds whenever the attack time is at zero? So whenever I draw it back to about 20 or 30 milliseconds, it opens up a lot more and that's what I'm looking for. So the next thing you want to adjust is going to be the release time. A fast release is going to give you a spitty in your face, more aggressive vocal. If you would like a little bit more control and a smoother vocal, you're going to slow down the release time a little bit. First, I'm going to level the vocal with the beat and then I'm going to play with the release time just to see how it's sitting um, in context of the track. So let's go ahead and listen to it. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit loud on my master bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the fruity limiter and I'm just going to crank the ceiling up. That's going to give me a little bit more headroom to mix louder just because that's the way I normally mix. So anyways, I'm going to go back to this. Let's play it. Um, I turn the gain up on the compressor just to level it more with the track. So let's go ahead and listen to it. I can't be low, can't stop, get mine, and then I go to bed. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm liking the sound of this faster release on this compressor plugin. 
Now, keep in mind, your attack and release is going to be completely different. Your threshold is going to be completely different. All of your settings are going to be completely different based on the track. That's why I'm not telling you to use these exact settings. Don't use these exact settings. They're, they're going to be different each time. I'm just trying to teach you the tools so that you can creatively take the track in whatever direction you need to take it in, right? So <clears throat> that sounds pretty good to me so far. So once your um, compression is dialed in, your next step is going to be EQ. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this fruity parametric EQ too. Step one, we're going to cut all the unnecessary low end out of the vocal. That's step one. We don't want any muddiness. We don't really need too much low end in the vocal. It's mainly a more mids and, and high end instrument. So I'm going to just grab this low band. We're going to play with it and we're going to find where is the sweet spot. Okay. Okay, you see how thin that sounds? Cutting way too much. You need some some more of that low end in there. I'm gonna dial it back to where it sounds good to me. Alright, so somewhere in that 120, 80 hertz range, that's generally a safe spot to cut the low end in the vocals. The next step is I want to see how the mids and high end of the vocal are going to cut through the track. So I'm actually just going to grab a high shelf, boost the heck out of it, and I'm going to sweep it around, and I'm going to find exactly where the vocal sounds like it's sitting just perfectly. Don't be scared to boost a shit ton. Don't be scared to move this high shelf all the way down if you need to. Completely depends on the vocal. There's no no rules the only rules if it sounds good it is good I'm gonna go ahead and play and start tweaking so when I bring the high shelf down to this one kilohertz region it really kind of brightens up the vocal and gives me more mid-range that I felt like I was missing before so I really like that we're also adding some extra harshness so I'm gonna grab one of these EQ bands and I'm gonna search for that harshness and I'm gonna tame it a little bit so let's go ahead and listen to it so I, I can't be low, can't stop, get my, and then Oh, you hear that? Hear how harsh that sounds around that 2K, 2500 region. All right, so I'm just going to dip that down a little bit, okay? So let's listen to it. So you're just trying to smooth it out a little bit, tame some of that harshness that you added with the high shelf. The final step where your EQ is going to be tame, the lower mid region, and this just kind of polishes vocals up a little bit more, can kind of keep them from sounding cheap or like a bedroom vocal. Be careful. If you cut too much lower mids, your vocal is going to sound thin and wimpy. You don't want that. You want it to be powerful, but you also don't want it to sound muddy. So I'm going to grab one of these bands and I'm going to play around with the low mids, see if we can find um, where it sounds sweet. So I, I can't be low. All right, so I'm just cutting a little bit. Like, again, I'm doing all of this kind of by ear. I'm not worried about what it looks like visually. I'm not worried about how much I'm really boosting. None of that matters. What matters is that it sounds good. Then a lot of people are going to tell you once you've got your EQ and your compression, you're going to make a bus and put your effects on your bus. Personally, I think it's completely fine to just put your effects directly on the vocals. So that's what we're going to do in this case. So first, I'm going to do delay, and then I'm going to do some reverb. I really like this Fruity Delay 3, and I'm just going to turn the wet knob down and I'm gonna set this to ping pong and then I'm just gonna gradually bring it in and kind of find the sweet spot where it sounds good to me okay so that's starting to sound kind of cool but it's too noticeable so I'm gonna tweak this tone knob a little bit and then I'm also gonna turn this cut off I'm gonna set this to low pass right here so that's cutting high end out of the delays and I'm gonna tweak this cut off just to kind of smooth out them delays and make them not get in the way of the main vocal as much so, so I, I can't be
now I'm gonna add some reverb. All right, so I'm gonna use this Fruity Reverb 2. And keep in mind this decay, this DEC, that's actually the length of your reverb. So that's probably gonna be the main thing that you tweak. And then the size is kind of gonna affect the reverberations of how it sounds. And then obviously your mix and your high and low cut. So first thing, I'm gonna set the decay time. Generally, I like to use kind of longer reverbs. That's just my personal uh, go-to sound. There's lots of different ways to play with reverb. In fact, you may wanna over exaggerate the reverb at first, find the settings for the reverb that sound perfect to you. From there, then you dial in the wet dry to the appropriate level. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and dial in this decay for you guys. Okay, that sounds sweet to me. I like to use this wet dry over here in the mixer. So I'm just gonna start with it at zero and bring it in until it sounds perfect to me. Okay. So we pretty much got our main vocal dialed in at this point. The next thing we want to do is just copy these settings over to all the other vocals and then just tweak from there. How to do that in FL Studio, click on the channel that you want to take the effects from. So in this case, our main vocal is channel two. Click it. We're going to right click it, go to file and see how it has the save mixer state as. I'm going to left click and drag it. Okay. Then you just drag it to whatever other track you want to move the effects to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this to all the tracks that need processing. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix in the double. The double we can go ahead and kind of keep basically the same as the main vocal, just adjust the volume. So I actually kind of want to spread that out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the stereo shaper. And um, basically all you got to do is tweak these knobs just to kind of spread that double out a little bit. I just want to get it out of the way of the main vocal and be kind of more of a supporting member. I don't want it to cover up the main actor, which is the main vocal. All right, so let's go ahead and tweak this a little bit. So I, I can't be low, can't stop, get mine, and then I go to bed. Okay, so we spread it out a little bit and we turned it down. Still sounds a little like it's sticking out too much to me. So I'm gonna take another EQ. I'm just gonna shave off some lows and highs and that'll kind of sit it more behind the main vocal. So let's go ahead and play with that. All right, and also keep in mind your backing vocals, you can also turn the volume down more and increase the effects a little bit. Just adds a little bit more spaciousness. Now that we've got the double and the mains taken care of, I'm gonna pull in some of these in and out tracks, which these are basically kind of like little harmonies and just um, doubles. So I, I can't be low, can't stop, get all right, so now we're gonna mix in these in and out tracks. I'm just gonna start with a little bit of volume. I'm gonna crank them up and then I'm gonna dial them back, so. so I, I can't be low, can't stop, get my goals and bags. Okay, so this one is actually a high. Now with highs, I really like to go crazy with the EQ and the effects. I like to cut all the highs and lows pretty extreme. All 
All right, so picking somewhere in the mid range here to just boost will kind of make those highs sit in their own spot where nothing else is sitting. I kind of like to do the same with ad libs, backing tracks. You're essentially just going to cut the meat and potatoes with the lows and highs out just to get them out of the way of everything. And then you're going to find a place to put them with where you boost. So up in here sounded pretty good. And then I'm also going to crank the effects and then I'm going to turn it down. What I want, so, so, run the fade. He told me I want to go get it involved and say, home for you. So I, I can't be low, can't stop, get mine, and then I go to the back. All right, now we're gonna take this, copy it over to the ad libs. So I'm gonna process them basically the same way, right? And then 1011, um, in this particular case, it's just printed audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and listen to it and adjust it. Okay, that's like a little harmony type thing. So we're just gonna bring that in. Alright, all I got to mix left is this little vocoder section at the very end. So I'm going to crank the um, kind of the space up on that a little bit more and drop it back in the mix. Now, once you got everything dialed in, then you're just going to tweak the master. Um, we're going to keep everything super simple. So I put this in here just to drop it down so I wasn't hitting the master too hard. Now I'm going to pull up this fruity limiter. I've already got the ceiling set to max. I kind of like to leave this envelope alone. I'm just going to add a little bit of gain if it needs it. And keep in mind, once you start um, adding gain, you're going to be doing more compression to the whole track. So it is going to make um, harsh frequencies pop out more. You may have to go searching for those and kind of smooth your vocals out a little bit more. Now, also, you're going to turn this saturation. This actually adds saturation when you turn it down, not when you turn it up. This is kind of confusing. I don't know why they did that, but just keep that in mind. So you're going to add a little bit of saturation if it needs it. So I, I can't be low. Okay, so that's a very quick mix for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will be posting some more in-depth mixing tutorials. If you have simple stock plugins, you can still get a good sound. I wanted to show you guys that that is achievable. Keep in mind, I mix this really fast. Um, it probably doesn't sound as good as the actual released version. I spent a lot more time on that, but check it out. Let me know what you guys think of the actual song. Be looking forward to my next video. I'm going to be doing a mixing tutorial with Studio One Stock plugin. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe. Again, my name is Schaefer. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys have a good day.